Hi everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and it's fantastic to have you here. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at this DIY 3D printed diamond engraver. So let's get started. I really wanted a diamond engraver for my CNC machine. Um, however, I found it really hard to obtain one at a really good price or um, even to acquire one locally was really difficult. So um, after a little bit of research online, in China that they sell these little diamond engraving bits. Now they come in two shapes, a 90 degree and a 60 degree. Um, so essentially all they are is just steel with a very fine tip on the end and that's, uh, that's the diamond part. Um, and that's the only part that needs to be uh, like squeezed or pushed into your material to engrave. So um, what I ended up doing was uh, creating this 3D printed housing for the uh, engraving bit and it's super easy to print and put together. So I'm gonna show you very quickly on how to print this and to put it together. So let's get started with um, the printing. So um, essentially it comes with uh, three different parts that you need to print. The first part is the lid that can be faced upwards on the machine to print and then the other parts can be faced downwards to print as well as the, uh, the main housing and the piston itself. Um, now I call this a piston, I'm not really sure what it is, it's more of a holder just to stop the spring going over. So once it's printed out, um, you can go ahead and start to construct it. So starting with the, uh, the diamond engraving bit, it's, uh, it's sometimes very hard to try and insert it into the center, mainly because of the, uh, the 3D printed part, might, uh, the tolerances might be a bit off. So what you'll need to do is uh, grab a, a drill bit that is either equivalent or a bit smaller than the diamond engraving bit. So I'm currently using the 3.175 millimeter diamond engraving bits. And so I've actually got a three millimeter drill bit. Um, and uh, all you'll need to do is uh, gently just drill out the center hole of this just to get rid of any um, plastic that may have uh, uh, interfered with the hole there um, and then try inserting it again. Um, and the more you do that, um, the more that will open that hole up. Um, however, you are at risk of making that hole too big. Um, and so a really easy to fix uh, solution for that is that if the hole is too large, just get a little bit of paper, wrap it around the diamond engraving bit, and then go ahead and then reinsert that in. And that should have a really tight tolerance in the hole for the diamond engraving bit. So once that's all together, um, you can place the piston in there. You can place your spring on top. Now that's a, a spring that I um, had left over from my Ender 3 3D printer. Um, it's just the bed leveling printer um, spring. And then you can place the top on. Now, when you're printing these out, it's really important to um, print it on a high resolution because of the threads. Otherwise the threads won't print out properly. Now, just on the side here, we have uh, two uh, 22 mil um, M4 screws with the uh, drop-in T-nut inserts um, to go on the end. So I created this way so it could fit into any T-slot uh, aluminium extrusion. I'm going to go ahead and mount it on and let's see how it performs. So after fastening securely to the Z-axis, you can see here that I start the engraving bit in a compressed state. Now this is really important to find the zero point, so I know how far that that diamond engraving bit needs to be pushing down into the aluminium stock. And you can see here that it wasn't perfectly perpendicular to the spoil board, so it was slightly off on the first pass. And I, I did first start that and start it a little bit further into the aluminium. Now just a reminder that it'll only push in as much as it can the more that you push the more uh, pressure that you do put on the uh, diamond uh, bit at the end so uh, it didn't really change the width of the uh, the line that I was uh, tracing uh, with uh, different pressure it just kind of uh, stayed with what it could do so you can see here that it's going through really really well doing a lot of really great detail and um, to be honest I was really surprised with the outcome here and the ability for my machine to do this really fine detail 
uh, before I started the diamond engraving, I did find a piece of aluminium. It was uh, brushed aluminium, so it didn't have much reflection. I did uh, quickly just polish it up so that you could see this result to its best. So you can still see some lines in the aluminium, um, but it does have a really beautiful result on the uh, diamond engraving, especially on the uh, reflective surface of the aluminium. I unfortunately won't be showing you today how I created this toolpath in Fusion 360. However, that there are some other really fantastic YouTubers such as Winston Moy. Um, he did a really great tutorial on how to set up the diamond bit and gravy, uh, especially in Fusion 360. So I suggest uh, checking out his video. I have put that in the link below. Essentially, all I've used in this toolpath was a outline trace and also a parallel toolpath on a 45 degree angle to create the infill to complete this, uh, the logo of my channel here. So if you have seen the diamond engraver videos before or have tried it yourself, you'll know that it does leave a slight burr on the surface of where that metal has been separated. But I think that I'll leave that uh, a topic for another time to cover. In this video, just focusing mainly on the engraving using the diamond bit. So I wanted to take the concept a lot further with the diamond engraver and I came up with the concept of doing an engraving uh, of a sword and uh, the reason why was that I could do a whole lot of different angles really to emphasize the way that the light hit the engraving. And you can see here that I'm just showing you quickly how I set up the, the tool in uh, Fusion 360 for this toolpath. Um, you can see that I did start with an outline then I went on to creating different parallel paths on different directions uh, and to see what happened um, as a bit of an experiment um, in how you could approach using the diamond engraver for different jobs. So I'm going to leave you uh, for now and I'll see you back at the end of the video.
So I am so impressed with this final result. This is absolutely flawless and I'm sure that you could agree. Um, guys, if you're interested in creating your own V-bit uh, attachment for your CNC, I have put the links below um, and also where to purchase the, uh, the diamond engraver from. If you have any comments, put it down below. Otherwise, subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time.